Hello and welcome back to League One, where the AFC Wimbledon Wimbly Womblies are taking on Burton Albion. I mean, let's let's not kid ourselves. That's that's not real, right? That's like Narnia. Um, I'm very excited for the game though, because I always enjoy an opponent who wears yellow and black. I have two favorite football kits. Number one, pink. Number two, yellow and black. I just think like if you dress like a bumblebee, you're always going to be successful. You know? Is everything all right, Meredith? And if you don't dress like a bumblebee, life's going to be harder for you. Um, in fact, AFC Wimbledon's uh, FIFA 16 away kits, which don't accurately reflect actual AFC Wimbledon's away kits, are this beautiful green and green stripe. It's vaguely bumblebee-ish, and I absolutely love it. So today we're starting Akinfenwa and green up front. We've got uh, Ginger Henri and, uh, and Jakey Reeves, the golden child. As you can see, we are nine points clear of South End United uh, at the top of the league one table on our way to the championship we've played great this season i've been thrilled with the response that i've gotten from the boys look at that dftba on akin Flynn was the liminal space between his thigh and buttock it's just beautiful um i don't even know what i'm talking about today marath what am i talking about oh my favorite class is from college that was a terrible pass no, we're only supposed to give the other team corner kicks. Um, my favorite... So I, I had a few favorite classes in college. One was about... Uh, I liked all my, like, intro classes and everything, but, like, for me it really got interesting when we started delving into the depths of various uh, topics. So, for instance, one of my favorite classes in college was about... Uh, it was called uh, Islam in Central Asia, and it was about the history of... Uh, of Islam. Oh, 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 it's a goal! It's a goal from Ginger Ulrey! Ginger Ulrey, Ginger Ulrey, Ginger Ulrey has a soul! It happened. It happened right off the bottom of the crossbar. Just a magnificent header. It always goes in if it touches red hair. Everybody knows that. That's why you try to get gingers on your team. Oh, Ginger Ulrey. Oh, it's beautiful. JJ's daddy hugging him, just taking him to... Oh, God, show me more. Show it to me. I love it. Yes. It's magnificent. Congratulations on your first goal as a Wimbly Wombly, Ginger Henry. It's magnificent. It's beautiful. Everything feels good. I'm just so bad at rolling my R's and singing on key. If I could do two things better, those would be the two. So this class about Central Asian Islam, it's looked at the uh, former Soviet republics of uh, Central Asia, uh... Uh, sometimes known as the Stans, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, etc., and how uh, people in those communities came to identify as Muslim. This is a really interesting thing because, you know, it's pretty rare in human history that large groups of people uh, adopt a new religion together. So this happened in the Roman Empire under uh, the Emperor uh, Constantine and... Um, and, you know, it happened a few times off the, off the crossbar, saved off the crossbar from JJ's dad, who he almost just scored from a corner kick. Um, happened, uh, you know, it's happened other, other places uh, in Europe um, with Christianity. Uh, but it's always an interesting kind of place to study because it gets at two important things, which is like what people think of as the central, what people thought of as the central tenets of a religion uh, at a particular period of time in a particular place. And also, you know, how people, what, what it means to identify not just as a Muslim, but as, as an Uzbek or as a Roman or whatever. Like, what does that mean to think of yourself as a citizen of Rome um, or to think of yourself like, like when your emperor um, changes religions, you also change religions. Well, what does that mean to have that person? Oh, it's a terrible foul. That's a red card. That was a great, disgraceful foul. You did not do any, you, you have not bathed the beautiful yellow and black of your kit in glory today, sir. All right, Meredith. Should we go for it? We're going for it. Hmm, what's happening? Oh, they just were told to back up. Okay. Can I, can I shoot now? Am I allowed to shoot? All right. So the keeper's over there, so I think I got to shoot over here and then just try to put it in the top corner. Oh! Oh, wow! I didn't put it in the top corner at all, but the, I, the, I forced a save out of the keeper, which is frankly kind of miraculous um, just based on my previous uh, work as a, as a free kick taker. 
So anyway, it gets into all kinds of interesting stuff about like how we even identify as a nation in the first place or how we identify as a people in the first place. Uh, I'm obsessed with that stuff uh, ever since one of my other favorite classes from college, which is um, which was uh, an independent study where I read Ulysses. So there were there were four people in that class. It was taught by this brilliant uh, joy scholar, Kim McMullen. And there were four uh, four people in the class. Uh, me. Uh, my friend Bruce Wallace, who's now works for uh, public radio for a show called The World. And um, then also uh, my friend Mary Fran Torpy, who became a lawyer and then uh, saw the light and became a librarian and is now uh, a librarian at a school. And, um, and uh, Ransom Riggs, who went on to write Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, which is going to be a big hit movie very soon. Um, I'm very excited about that, I have to say. So... That class was amazing because I was reading this amazing book that's very, very difficult to read. And so uh, it was not an easy class for me because I don't, I don't read difficult books well or easily. But it was a great class because A, of the people I was reading the book with, and B, because of the book itself. Uh, especially the questions for me, what, what was most interesting about there's, I mean, you can e draw endlessly from Ulysses. It's one of those books that's kind of endlessly rich, but for me, what was so interesting about it, um, was, was the way it looked at the question of, of the nation and the question of, uh, an individual being part of a, of a people and what that meant, what the sort of like freedoms and restrictions of that, which is especially interesting in the context of Irishness, um, you know, a, a, a long marginalized um, way of being or a long marginalized way of being in a nation. Um, and so, and in the context of Jewishness, uh, which is another long marginalized uh, uh, civilizational identity. And um, that was really, really interesting to me. So the main character of that book is both Irish and Jewish, um, which lots of uh, the characters and the, the Irish characters in the book basically think of as impossible. They think, you know, well, you've got to pick, like, are you Irish or are you Jewish? What, what are you? Um, pass the ball. Oh, it's a terrible finish. Oh man. My finger. That's entirely the fault of my finger. 0% Ogden Fen was fault. My finger just barely glanced upon the B button and it needed to just settle on it a little harder. We had a two on zero there and somehow managed not to get the ball into the back of the net. I want to apologize uh, on that count uh, to my friends and family. So this 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 idea though of like what constitutes a nation um there's a moment in the book i've talked about it a million times before it's my favorite moment in the book where bloom is asked at a bar by some irish guy well what is a nation and bloom says well it's the same people living in the same place you know the irish people living in the same in ireland um and then he pauses and says well we're also living in different places because of course at that by that time you know there were many uh, there were as many irish people living outside of ireland as there were irish people inside of ireland um, the Irish diaspora was already well established by the time uh, Joyce wrote Ulysses. And then also there's, there was the, the Jewish diaspora, um, you know, th being civilizationally or nationally Jewish uh, at the time meant living without, essentially without a homeland. Um, you know who's not living without a homeland? Ball John Green, because he lives in South London. English born, English bred. Just kidding, he's American. Ball John Green, John Green. He gives it all for the team. Upon his mustache, we're keen. Ball John Green, John Green. Ginger Ari, a little disappointed not to get that ball, but I think it was the right call. Ball John Green sees the goal, he scores in the goal. It's pretty straightforward for him. He's not a thinker, he's a doer. Um, so... Right. So, like, what does it mean to be Irish and live in America? Or what does it mean to be, as Ball John Green is, American but live in England? At what point do you cease to become English and become American? Well, part of that is just a matter of, like, taking a citizenship test, I suppose, and deciding deciding that you're going to uh, cast your lot with the English instead of with the Americans. But part of it, we all know, is more than that. Like, it's a complicated nexus of things. Um, and anybody who like claims that it isn't complicated or that they have a straightforward understanding of the definition of American is probably ultimately not being uh, either not being straightforward or is like imagining a world of of simplicities in a world of complexity. And like that stuff really fascinated me reading about, you know, how in a kind of post-colonial 
world or uh, i mean at the time ireland was in a, in a mostly post-colonial state um you know how do you uh come to identify oh and fenway's a poacher he is an absolute poacher oh and he loves to, he loves to turn a cartwheel here and there which i enjoy and appreciate oh He's been, look at that, it's just, that is a striker's goal right there. Just like, I think I'll sit in front of the goal, see if something happens, and then just calmly, just, just chug it down the middle. He almost could have walked it in, Meredith. That could have been my favorite kind of goal, but I made a decision to do what I thought was best for the club, and that was just to throw it in the back of the net with, with holding the B button for a second instead of just tapping it, uh, when I, which is what happened when I made my previous mistake. Um... So anyway, that I, I read lots of like uh, you know kind of co co colonial and post-colonial literary analysis, reading up about Ulysses, and it was really helpful for me in thinking about what does make um, what does make a nation and what does make a national identity, and you know the ways that colonialism really uh, tore that apart and be was this tremendously destructive force to. Um, to those identities and instead of letting them um, form uh, naturally or, or letting them, them form according to their own geographic boundaries, sort of forced, um, forced boundaries upon them. And uh, yeah, it's just really, it was really interesting to me. Um, another class that I found really interesting in, in high school, I mean, in college was my American literature overview. So I took this 8 a.m. class with Professor Perry Lentz and it was, I don't know why I got a free kick out of this, but I'm just going to try to do the exact same thing I tried to do last time. Um, it was an amazing class. It didn't work. Um, it was just, you know, one of those classes where you just felt absolutely bowled away by the professor. He was just brilliant. So we read Emily Dickinson's poems. We read uh, uh, Moby Dick. Uh, we read The Americans by Henry James, another great a uh, novel about what constitutes uh, Americanness or what constitutes a national identity in a, in a nation composed primarily of of people descended from uh, from immigrants, um, and uh, yes, yeah, fascinating book. Um, we read uh, the Scarlet Letter. Never been a favorite of mine. Um, we read just lots of like lots of stuff. Um, we read some Faulkner. Read the, I think it was the Bear, which is just a fantastic story. Um, and uh, it's just a great, 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 great class. Uh, fascinating, fascinating class in which I learned a lot from the autobiography of Ben Franklin all the way um, through to, you know, World War II literature. And uh, it had a lot to do with how I think, especially about uh, symbol and metaphor and the roles, I guess, that symbol and metaphor play in literature. That, that, for, that reading isn't about uh, symbol hunting. Um, it's about, you know, how are we going to use language to describe things that are difficult to describe using language? Um, you know, how are we going to describe the things that when you look directly at, you don't see? And there's a lot of things like that in, in the universe, you know, that, that, that are best seen uh, in reflection or that, that somehow like looking directly at them uh, is to look directly at them is to not understand them. So uh, I think about the way that Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote about the banana strike massacre in 100 years of solitude, for instance, you know, he, he used a sort of, um, a, a lens of uh, absurdity and magic to get at this very real, very horrifying thing, or the way that Vonnegut wrote about, um, the Dresden firebombing in slaughterhouse five, uh, the way that, um, uh, Toni Morrison writes about slavery and beloved. Th there's something that that brings home uh, the reality of of experience that sometimes you can't get direct by by uh, by writing about it in a straightforward or direct way. And that for me was the magic of that class. So those are a few of my favorite classes from college. Uh, it was a dominant a dominant performance from AFC Wimbledon. You've got to say at, at this point it's looking good. For the championship next season, I just I love all the way Akin Fenwa plays. I love the way Ball John Green and Akin Fenwa play together. I almost almost was brought to tears a couple times during that video just because of the absolute magnificence of of it all. So let's just try to keep going from strength to strength and hopefully make a nice FA Cup run because we are out of money. All right, thanks for watching. Best wishes.